Good evening, everybody. This is a live extreme weather briefing with Tropical Storm Elsa uh, that is churning over land now over central Cuba. Uh, that center is on approach to Havana. Looks like it's going to pass just to the east of Havana. This is the Key West radar here that you're looking at. And this storm has weakened over land just a bit. Uh, max sustained winds are down to 50 miles an hour. That minimum pressure is up to 1,008 millibars. But passing over land like this could give Elsa an opportunity to develop a more favorable tropical cyclone structure uh, that could allow for more uh, rapid intensification. If you can get a more vertically oriented tropical cyclone from the low level cyclone up to the mid levels, um, it can more efficiently generate that uh, latent heat release. And then that leads to more rapid pressure falls. And there could even be uh, the opportunity for this thing to become a hurricane again as it lifts off to the north. Uh, through the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And just because the cone is offshore here doesn't mean that there's not going to be impacts along the Florida Peninsula. And in fact, uh, you can already see on radar that a majority of the stormy conditions are located near and just to the east of the center, uh, basically with this comma head wrapping around. And there is a decent chance that this thing could re-intensify once it emerges uh, over uh, the relatively warm eastern Gulf of Mexico. Could even possibly become a low-end hurricane. Uh, the new European model uh, came out on fire showing this thing intensifying into a category one hurricane uh, before uh, uh, making landfall uh, to the north of uh, Tampa probably uh, very early on Wednesday morning. But that's an outlier and most of the uh, forecast models are not showing that. Uh, a majority keep this thing a tropical storm as it lifts off to the north. It's going to likely maintain uh, that relatively tilted structure as it lifts off to the north. Eventually it's going to encounter some southwesterly uh, wind shear as well with a uh, upper level low, uh, upper level low that's organizing over the central uh, Gulf Coast region. The southwesterly winds out ahead of that upper level low should counteract uh, the intensifying uh, trend um, uh, as this emerges over the warm waters of the eastern Gulf of Mexico. But the European seems to allow Elsa to carve out an environment of relatively favorable conditions as it lifts uh, off to the north uh, through the eastern Gulf, passing well to the west of Key West. And you could certainly see that weakening trend here on water vapor and infrared satellite. I'm on the Radar Omega app here uh, with a majority of that uh, dying convective shield off to the east of the center, uh, the center lifting off to the north. Look at it pull in all this dry air. So I think that the European model is quite a dramatic outlier uh, with this system. Uh, it seems like this tropical cyclone is uh, losing its identity just a bit as it's passing over land. And uh, instead of uh, kind of regaining a more vertically oriented structure once it emerges over the warm waters of the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, it looks like to me it's just going to re retain uh, this tilted structure uh, as it begins to encounter uh, those stronger southwesterly mid and upper tropospheric winds lifting off to the north 
through the eastern Gulf of Mexico. But still the official National Hurricane Center intensity and uh, forecast track uh, reinvigorates the storm uh, back to what it was on approach to Cuba. Max sustained winds of about 65 miles an hour. And even though it is going to pass to the west of Tampa tomorrow evening, the southwesterly winds that will whip around on the backside and the wind field is probably going to expand as this lifts off to the north and it interacts with that southwesterly wind shear. Uh, but that's going to uh, pile up the water within Tampa Bay there. And uh, storm uh, surge models are showing two to four feet uh, of storm surge there in Tampa Bay and uh, extending off to the north. And that could be a life-threatening surge if you find yourself in the wrong place uh, at the wrong time uh, in a really low-lying area there right along the coastline. Uh, so uh, most of the people that live in Tampa definitely know where those flood-prone areas are located. Uh, but this definitely does look like at least a two to four foot uh, surge coming into Tampa Bay. Uh, there, a one to two foot surge uh, overnight tonight uh, can be expected throughout the Keys. Uh, that's not going to be uh, incredibly impactful. Uh, there are usually storm surges, even with very strong storms that approach the Keys, uh, will often just go up and over uh, the lower terrain and instead of getting piled up. Uh, like you will uh, along the mainland or the Florida Peninsula here where you have that land mass then you get that piling up effect of the water. Uh, but the Florida Keys, uh, for example, Hurricane Irma had a pretty significant storm surge anywhere to the east of Key West uh, and along uh, Marathon area. Uh, but it wasn't that uh, prolific double digit storm surge uh, that you can get along the mainland here and along these concave uh, areas of the shoreline. But then the storm lifts off to the northeast, uh, passing through southeastern Georgia, uh, the eastern Carolinas, and really anywhere near and to the east of this track, there's likely going to be a tornado threat, uh, central and eastern South Carolina, central and eastern North Carolina there, as that storm uh, lifts off to the northeast. But I wanted to show you the European model just to show you how nuts it went. Uh, basically, the entire uh, life cycle of this storm. The European model was on the lower end of uh, tropical cyclone intensity and even also on the eastern and the northern end in terms of its track, uh, lifting a hardly identifiable uh, tropical cyclone off to the north through the Bahamas and then eventually missing the east coast completely. But we seem to have kind of an average of between uh, 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 an average scenario between the GFS and the European uh, that played out here. But now suddenly this morning run of the uh, European model, and this was this morning, and this is probably the main reason why uh, the National Hurricane Center forecast track has this reinvigorating up to a relatively stout tropical cyclone. Uh, this is at 12Z tomorrow morning, so 7, 8 p.m. tomorrow morning, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, shows just to the northwest of Key West, an intensifying tropical cyclone with big time southerlies hammering the western portion of the Florida Keys, probably a one to two foot surge there. Uh, that could be more impactful if it coincides uh, with high tide. But then look at this uh, eject off to the north and deepen at the same time out ahead of that upper level low that's going to be located over the north central uh, Gulf Coast region. Uh, this lifting off to the north in tandem with those southwesterly uh, mid and upper tropospheric winds. In a storm relative sense, the wind shear isn't that... Uh, it isn't that bad out of the southwest and the eastern Gulf of Mexico uh, through uh, 12Z on Wednesday morning. So I could easily fly out to Florida and then intercept a potential hurricane here to the north of Tampa, rolling in tomorrow evening into Jacksonville, then I could blast southwest and then get into this uh, tropical cyclone if this model verifies. But this is definitely an outlier. And then look at it lift off to the northeast, likely with a tornado threat uh, there. This is Thursday morning at 12Z. Uh, as this uh, basically a strong surface low lifts off to the northeast, uh, likely uh, could be a tornado threat associated with that. This is the tropicaltidbits.com website where I'm looking at this European model. And then it lifts off the North Carolina Outer Banks and likely will continue to intensify there. This is Friday morning and this will lift off to the northeast, potentially impacting portions of eastern Canada, uh, the Canadian Maritimes up there. Newfoundland, Nova Scotia could see an impact from this storm as well. But really along and east of the track is where the tornado potential could happen. On Thursday, it uh, looks like the eastern Carolinas, eastern South Carolina, eastern North Carolina could see a tornado threat you know, with this thing lifting off to the northeast. But again, as I mentioned, the European model this morning coming in hot was a pretty dramatic outlier. 
uh, for this uh, tropical cyclone. Here are the hurricane model intensity forecast, the 18Z runs here. And they do show a bit of uh, intensification up to 55 knots, so a 60 to 65 mile an hour type max sustained uh, wind here with the tropical storm Elsa and then passes over land and then weakens quite a bit. Uh, the ship model here is an out outlier showing this re-intensification to a category one hurricane uh, by uh, 84 to 96 hours as it passes off uh, eastern North Carolina. And I did see uh, some discussion amongst the uh, tropical experts uh, so far on Twitter uh, and some of those discussions say that if a hurricane has a pretty well-defined outflow pattern, basically that anticyclonic swirl that you'll see aloft with the feathery bands as well coming off, when that outflow is substantial, when the convection goes all the way up to the top of the troposphere, uh, then it fans out in an outflow pattern that has an anticyclonic spin to it, that outflow, if it's intense enough, can counteract the uh, effects of wind shear, and that can be another uh, example of uh, a tropical cyclone that can intensify within an environment of increasing wind shear. But this one does not have a very impressive outflow pattern. Uh, definitely has weakened as it's passed over Western Cuba uh, down to uh, uh, that minimum pressure is up to 1,008 millibars. Basically a high pressure system. Uh, and in fact, a surface low on Friday, that severe weather set up in Eastern Nebraska through Central Iowa, the surface low could be about 995 with that one, now that severe weather set up ahead of that potent upper level short wave that's coming in from the northwest to the southeast, uh, bringing with it a threat of supercells and even tornadoes across eastern Nebraska into Iowa. But first, we got to get through Elsa lifting off to the north. Uh, interesting, uh, I'll be very uh, interested to see if this thing can reinvigorate upon uh, leaving the coastline. Havana is on the north coastline there of Cuba. There you can see that little spin, even a little supercell storm there possibly uh, to the east of Havana as that lifts off to the northwest. And it does look like it is, uh, maybe that center is uh, passing a little bit further right than some of the models are indicating, but it's probably just that tilt from the east to the west uh, with that low level center right about here. And then the upper level center off to the east, it's even becoming more decoupled with time. Uh, so I suspect that when this reemerges over the eastern Gulf of Mexico, it's still likely to have uh, that tilted tropical cyclone structure as it lifts off to the north. You can also see a lot of this dry air located over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. That'll be likely entrained into that uh, low level uh, meso uh, that that low level circulation. But there is a chance that since this thing was tilted throughout its life cycle and it wasn't able to intensify as rapidly as it could, that moving over land here in Cuba could allow for kind of a, a fresh restart uh, with this system, uh, kind of a fresh start uh, for it. Uh, it could completely weaken, and then as it moves over the warmer waters, it could develop a more vertically oriented structure from the low-level cyclone up to the mid and upper-level cyclone as well. But you could definitely see... Uh, this cloud shield and this convection is heading off to the north in the direction of the western Florida Keys. So even though the, the uh, forecast track is well to the west, including the cone, uh, most of the impacts will be along and to the east of the center. And that's going to bring those impacts across the Florida Peninsula. Possibility for tornadoes as well uh, tomorrow afternoon, especially if the uh, Florida Peninsula can destabilize. And then you get that southwesterly wind shear in there a little bit. That can create even more favorable photographs in the front right, right quadrant uh, of this tropical cyclone as it lifts off to the north. So you definitely need to keep an eye on the Florida Peninsula. Stay tuned to those watches and those warnings uh, for a potential uh, tornado threat as Elsa lifts off to the north. In terms of my storm chasing, I'm watching that Friday set up quite closely in eastern Nebraska and into Iowa. But if Elsa does uh, uh, start to show signs that it's following that uh, European model trend, uh, from this morning's model runs, uh, then I'll hop on a plane, head out to Jacksonville, rent a car, blast southwest, and then intercept this thing uh, right uh, near the northwestern Florida uh, coastline there, east of the Big Bend, uh, north of Tampa, kind of a relatively unpopulated area there of northern Florida. Looks like when early Wednesday morning uh, type of a landfall here uh, with this track over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. But we're going to have to keep a close eye on this thing. Right now it looks very ragged, weakening over Cuba. We'll have to see if this uh, follows that European model solution, a relative outlier so far this morning, that this thing could intensify into a Category 1 hurricane once again.
So thank you everybody for tuning in to this live update on Tropical Storm Elsa. I'm going to continue to provide these live updates, maybe through the night tonight, uh, if this reinvigorates uh, to the north of Cuba. Definitely tomorrow morning though, and then I'll let you know what my storm chasing plans are for this in northwestern Florida. Uh, but really, I'm uh, definitely eyeing that Friday setup. Northwesterly flow setup, eastern Nebraska into central Iowa. I do think that there is a threat of tornadoes as well and supercell storms. And the surface flow for that setup is actually deeper by quite a bit uh, compared to Tropical Storm Elsa. So I know that all the news networks, everybody's covering this thing. And there are going to be impacts over the Florida Peninsula. But keep in mind that that European model solution is quite an outlier and all the rest of the uh, hurricane models and the GFS show a relatively weak tropical storm lifting northward to the eastern Gulf of Mexico, potentially with that tornado threat uh, during the afternoon hours tomorrow. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I'll keep you updated. Dominate the storm.